<laughs> we got one subscriber today. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and that's with no promotion. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to thank you for. Oh, well, you're camera. welcome. <laughs> I know I need to get one too. So it'll remind me too. Yeah. It's like, she's like watching I, me. Huh? This what one's is that? Watching me. She's oh, a little Diana. She's a little um, Brazilian doll. I got her when I went to Brazil. Uh-huh. So she's watching you. She's keeping tabs on you. She's yeah. like, what you doing, Leia? <laughs> Having this really helps. Is right. I keep it at my bedside. Uh -huh. And um, because it's so easy to, to fall back into mm. like old habits. Okay. I really want to have a drink right now because I'm getting ready to cook dinner. But if I have a drink right now, I'm not going to get shit done. And I need to get shit done. So I'm going to have to hold off on that drink. Damn. Whenever I get, like, inspired, I'll text you and be like, oh, yeah, I was working on Fearless. And and two anyway, two days passed, and I was like, I was like, I need to get back to it. But something always, like, distracts me. And so... Yeah. Like the night before last, Tony wanted to watch a movie. And then I think the night before that, something something happened that distracted me. So by the time I got space to myself, I was just like exhausted. And so last night, um, I was like, I'm working tonight. So <laughs> 8 .30, so about 8.30, I pulled out my computer, I pulled out my mic, and I started laying ideas for fearless and it's so funny because i had written one melody you know using my that phone method that i was talking talking mm -hmm. to you about so i wrote wrote one melody like that and then it's funny how that's another thing i'm gonna tell you another thing that why why two two or three days passed before i went back to the song is because you know how you get all excited and you're like oh, this is it, this is it, this is it. Yeah. I'm going to finish it tomorrow. And then the next day you're like, I don't know. <laughs> and then it was like, I kind of didn't want to like touch it in case it wasn't it. And, and I had to like start from scratch. And so last night I was like, okay. I listened to it again. I was like, okay, okay. It still feels good. It still feels good. <laughs> And then when I got to GarageBand and started recording it, the melody, it decided to do something different. So same lyrics, but the melody is a little more uh, funky blues, whereas in, initially the way that I wrote it was more pop. And then I was like, who am I writing for? Then I said, you know what? I'm going to write it for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write it the way that that feels good to me and so the whole melody changed but then it has these interesting uh little syncopated rhythms mm. well, that, I can't wait uh, to hear it. it's it's interesting because for the longest time I couldn't get the right couldn't get the right melody and it was so like that, uh, that, that clicked for you yeah it was like that made you feel like yes that's it right right so, so what I started, what I did then was like, okay, let me listen to what she did with your rhythms and where you placed your instrumentation. And so I was like, it's not just about, it's not just about the melody to what key it's in and, and, the, and the drum beat. I was like, what else is going on in the track? And it was when I really started uh, listening to what you did in the track that I was like, I don't want to fight with that. So it had, so it came out. I like, I like the direction that it's in. Okay. 
Yeah. So interestingly, when like when you say that, I think about <clears throat> when I'm writing the song after I'm done with the beat or the track, it's mm -hmm. hard for me to write because I already know everything that's in it. Yeah. So my brain is already like, I know what the beat sounds like. I know the keyboards. I know all the samples. So my brain can't go beyond that. Okay. And that's why I always like to hear like what you do or another uh -huh. writer, because you think you come to it from a different perspective. Like you, like you just said, you didn't even listen to all that other stuff in it until later. Yeah. What you can play around with. So right. to me, that's like what brings the creativity when right. as a writer. Because there was just like so many ways that I could have gone with it. But but when I'm approach when I'm looking at a track, especially now that I, you know, doing a lot of writing throughout the years and just understanding music better and also feeling like whatever like every track has has a story to tell mm -hmm. you know you whatever you decide to to call it it has a story to tell what what I put down last night the ideas that I I ended up putting down last night felt like yeah this is it and so and so in the hook I can hear you doing your your pretty background vocals, which will juxtapose kind of the the attitude of what I did with the with the hook. Oh, okay. So well, if I'm you could like give me an idea, then I will. I'll, I'll play yeah. around with it. Okay. Yeah. So so the first verse is written. Can you read it? Just, uh, yeah. And it's so weird because I wasn't planning on writing a second verse. Mm -hmm. Oh, because, you did? Because I was, because we had agreed that, hey, just get the first verse down. Just get it down. And we'll just record that and just move on. We'll just deal with it later. And then I woke up at 6.15 this morning thinking about the song. Good morning. I just woke up. I'm finishing the lyrics to Fearless. I just woke up with the first line. Second verse. So here we go. And then I ended up finish, finishing most of the second verse. At, at least the whole concept of it is mm -hmm. so pretty good done. And here are the lyrics. I'm all embarrassed. Okay, so <clears throat> the lyric is, um, what are you afraid of? What's got you stuck in the mud? Where's that hero to save you? She's staring back at you. She's got your cape, your superpower. So activate, take control. A leap of faith over dark waters. Now you're free to fly, free to fly. Ooh. Fearless. You're gonna wanna hear this. Get outside your box, handle your business. Take no prisoners, be fearless. And yeah. That's it. I like it. I now. <laughs> <laughs> very nice once you have it recorded i gotta send it to andre so he can add his little thing to it too okay now as far as motivation like you telling me about all these people and people that we can interview i think this is going to help motivate me to start okay. making different music like if you uh -huh. tell me the type of music they sing or used to sing then it'll give me something to listen to Okay. And I can be excited about it. Cause when I don't have any goals, like when, when I first started making music, I was like, what, 15, 14, it was just exciting playing the keyboard and hearing the sounds coming out of it. But I guess yeah. as you get older, you get a little used to that. It's like buying a new car. And then after <laughs> you've had it for a year or two, it's not that exciting anymore so yeah. every time there's a new project it's like getting a new car right, so right. I get excited again but I I want to get that back that little the innocence and kind of naivety of how do you say that word naivete of the youth when you don't know any better and you're just doing right. it right yeah it you're just, just doing sounds it. good and you love it yeah yeah does that happen for you when like do you get in you get into that zone where 
where you don't want to stop on a on a song yeah when I especially when it's like a few days off of work mm-hmm. and I, I don't have anything that I have to worry about mm-hmm. I can start like in the morning and I've got the whole day to just mess around with it by the end of that day that first day my mind is already in that zone where it's like I don't want to leave I just want to stay here and keep working on music and I can do that day after day mm-hmm. then as soon as I have to go back to work mm-hmm. my brain switches it's like that almost like a protection so you don't I don't get depressed about it <laughs> my brain just goes into work mode uh-huh. and then it's hard to get back into that music mode I think I was telling you about that the other day you get into this spot that you want to be in but then mm-hmm. eventually you have to get out of it and start getting back to life again yeah I I know the feeling definitely well we talked about last week about having having a space where as soon as you enter that space it triggers that state of mind Mm-hmm. And I guess uh, the evolution of your craft is trying to find a trigger, a quick trigger to get you into that space, whether it be meditation or flipping through a picture book or something. Naomi mentioned when I was studying to pass the PE, she said to light something that smells like lavender or like an essential oil during that time. So that when I go take the test, I can have that scent on me and it'll help revive that, those memories of whatever I was studying. So Ah. I wonder if that could work like with music, if I start trying to work on music with a certain scent so that when I want to get motivated, I just put that scent on (laughs) and maybe it'll trigger something. Yeah. I'm going to try that. That's actually, that's actually a great idea connecting your mindset to a certain sense. I'm going to try that. So I guess we could just talk about real quick things that happened since the last time, which would be the impeachment. These are all historical things that are going to go down in history, right? I know. Yeah, he's the only president to have been impeached twice. Twice. (laughs) Twice. So, So he's been impeached and it's headed to this Senate and the way that I understand it, they they hold the proceeding to decide whether or not to convict. Is I that think how it so. works? Yeah, there's going to be a trial. Yeah. What do you think? That should he be convicted? I think he should. Yeah, me Definitely. too. Be, yeah, because words have power and he being the most powerful person on the planet, you know, given his uh, position, Mm -hmm. he incited those people. He he knew what he was doing. Yeah, he did. He knew what he was doing. And I also think that there's some, I've been hearing that there are um, senators on the inside that probably facilitated Mm -hmm. the the break-in because how, it's just like, how could they have gotten in so easily? It had to have been an inside job. There's no way in heck yeah. they're just gonna, they're gonna get in there. I saw a video knowing. today where there was somebody at the window. I don't know if you saw this one where the lady's giving them direction from inside saying, go to the second floor and there's a window there and it'll get you into this chamber. And then if you go what? around to the other side, yes. And it was all on film. Yeah, so we did. next week we will drink wine with our session. Oh yeah, let's do that. Alrighty, Valerie. Well, it was nice talking to you as usual. You too, Leia. Thank you. Have a good weekend. All right, you too. If I think I'll of anything, you. I'll I'll send you little clips. You too. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye.